Hi. One of my greatest strengths and my greatest weaknesses is my honesty. It's gotten me in trouble more times than I can count because I'm also not afraid to um, debate with somebody and a lot of people, especially if they're my boss, take that as being argumentative. When I'm trying to help, really. Um, anyways, I want to be honest with you about something that I've thought about for a couple of years now about whether I should even make this video or not. And I finally come to the conclusion that I should. And so I'm going to tell you what it is I want to say. And then I'm going to explain to you why I continue to do my videos. Especially the videos that are geared at helping people and helping society and helping humanity and, and the earth. So, I like to study. I like to learn things. I don't like particularly going to university because there are far too many teachers and professors who are very dry and boring and just really don't know how to present a subject in a way that makes it exciting um, or even relatable to the real world. It becomes abstract and this is a challenge that um, I believe is mostly resolvable up to maybe a certain point in depending on the subject um, but I, I don't I don't know I don't know if teachers aren't taught this or they some teachers just don't have the ability to deal with it or what it is anyways so here it is in looking at uh, sorry <laughs> in looking at human behavior history sociology and stuff like that I, I've come to the conclusion that the chances are that we're just going to keep on mucking things up and ultimately we'll destroy ourselves if we don't destroy the planet first. Um, it's, there's just too many people because of circumstances, um, some of which are beyond their control and some of them which are within their control, that make decisions that are not beneficial except for on the short term to them personally and certainly aren't beneficial on the long term to anybody else. Um, and it doesn't matter what social economic class, class you're in. I, I've met poor, um, well, okay. Um, I've met wealthy people who have very poor long-term thinking um, and very selfish goals. And I've met uh, poor people as well that have the same problem. And to be fair, um, the poor people tend to make bad decisions more often than, than, than I would like. And unfortunately, the vast majority of people in the world are not wealthy. Um, so this is a double condemnation, really, because the wealthy people have the ability, through their wealth and power, to make the changes happen that would allow the world to become better, allow people, humanity to become better. Um, but there is at least a faction of them, I, don't, I can't say how many, uh, in terms of real numbers or percentages, um, that they want to maintain control and wealth and power. Um, and so they manipulate things to ensure that the rest of the people are constantly scrabbling to... Um, stay afloat, I guess you could say, uh, which is to say that, well, <sighs> if you look at the real wages in the United States over the span of my life, which is currently 53, um, real wages have depressed. Um, I'll give you a real example. In uh, two, 1998 till 2000, I worked at a company called Teletech, and I was a customer service agent for them. When I started, I was earning about $10 an hour, and I worked my way up. I became a team lead, then I became <coughs> a um, customer service supervisor, and I did some other supervision for them. Before I, I, got, I, fe I got fed up, um, but... That was uh, 2000 when I, when I quit from Teletech. In last uh, year, in 2019, when I was looking for work, I first looked at Teletech 
And I was surprised to find out that their wages were exactly the same as they had been 20 years, well, almost 20 years previously. And I, I, then they started contacting me, and I was getting contacted by different uh, teletech centers, and they were offering me you know, the possibility of a job. And yet they were only offering the same wages that I would have, that I had earned about 20 years ago. And I just turned them down. And there were several other companies that were offering, uh, you know, somewhere between eight and $12. And I felt it was insulting. You know, I've got a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, um, in a lot of different areas. And here they were offering me an insultingly low wage that I, you know, I can understand if you're brand new to customer service and you want to cut your teeth and, and learn how to do it, you you can learn a lot at a place like Teletech, um, not in some of the other places too. Some of them not so much, um, but for me, it was ridiculous. Um, so if if you, there was a movie I watched a, a few days ago, um, and this movie was called The Nut Job. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but in The Nut Job the raccoon uh, reveals a rather important secret about food, which is actually an allegory for, or analogy or whatever, for um, money. And basically, it's, if you can control the amount of that the, that's available to people, you can control the people. Um, and that's very true. If you keep everybody's wages low so that they're constantly scrabbling and fighting with each other and fighting with themselves, for that matter, and keeping them in a state of, of I guess you could say, disrepair and chaos, um, they will be easily manipulated and easily used to help you to maintain your level of wealth and or even increase it. So, you know, if we look at a lot of big family, uh, very rich families, they got their wealth either through uh, by standing on the backs of many, many people and uh, getting huge amounts of money while those people did not, and many of them even, you know, died um, either directly or indirectly because of their work, such as coal miners is, is a good example. Um, or they um, became wealthy through illegal activities like, um, well, Wells Fargo was involved in some very... Um, uh, CD things in the years uh, in years past. The Kennedy family was involved with the mafia. They were involved with uh, uh, alcohol smuggling during Prohibition. Uh, the Rockefellers, the the Chases, the Morgans, and all these other big families. Uh, they're not really very much different from say the Queen of England uh, and that family and the other royal families who amassed their wealth not by legitimate means but by robbery, murder, theft, and, and uh, pillaging, and, and invasions, and uh, uh, occupations, and things like that. Um, and they continue to practice that way. And there are a fair number of wealthy families who continue to this day to do that. There are others that choose not to uh, amass wealth in that manner. But when I was in Indonesia, I saw much of the same thing. So... There's a lot that could be resolved if humans um, were, get, you know, all humans had uh, better opportunities, better education. Um, but with other humans constantly working to keep them divided, keep us divided, to keep us down, to keep us um, scrabbling just to make ends meet, um, it's it's not going to happen, really. Um, so since we're fighting against the wealthy. And that does seem to be like a potentially insurmountable task. Um, maybe we should give up, right? Well, no. Um, the truth is, is that, sure, we're struggling, but that doesn't mean that we can't rise above the condition that we're in, rise above ourselves, become better people. So that's why I continue to do videos that are aimed at helping people, uh, whether it be through information about uh, how to do certain things or you know whatever, or information about how to help yourself uh, psychologically. Um, because I believe that if I were just to be like other people who have given up because they see human nature and the, and the greed and stuff, then I would fail. 
but if I remember like Edison and, and Tesla and, and um, Bell and Franklin and all these other very, very famous people from around the world, I mean, Admiral Yi of Korea, uh, Hiawatha, uh, um, and the Peacemaker, and, uh, oh my God, I can't even say the name of the woman who was the, the part of that trio. I, I apologize. Uh, let me just look here. Is Her name was Jigon Sase. Um, they were all part of the Iroquois nations that formed the... Um, the six nations uh, that were a peaceful organization. And there are just so many other examples you can pull out of history of, of people who rose up through great adversity and accomplished amazing things. Uh, you just The stories are all over the place. I mean, I've met people who are just struggling with adversity and they're... They're making it, you know. They're they're improving their lives. Um, I met a guy with I don't know if it was ALS or uh, one of the other debilitating illnesses out there, but he was nothing but skin and bones. He was in Indonesia, and yet he had a uh, repair business for computers. And although he could barely move because he was so emaciated from this illness, he still had employees who took care of him, employees who who did the work for him because he was no longer able to do any of that himself. And there are so many stories like that. Um, so I, I look at the other part of human nature that we can struggle and rise above adversity. We can work together to help each other. Um, and there are so many examples of that, you know. Uh, you know, the example of Hiawatha, uh, Deganawada, and uh, Jigon Sase of the Iroquois, they struggled against a, a diver, adversity to stop war, be, warring between the Iroquois tribes. And, and um, you know, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, he struggled against the British Empire. So, ultimately, although... I fear there is no hope for us as as creatures who are constantly um, behaving in selfish and dis- self-destructive and destructive ways, hedonistic ways. But I also look at these examples, these shining, wonderful examples, and I believe that it is possible if people like me and people like you don't give up that the world can become a better place, that we can eventually achieve heaven on earth. But it's going to take all of us banding together against those who are trying to keep us down. I don't mean war. I just mean that we rise above them on an intellectual, moral uh, plane and do what they're unwilling to do for us with their vast wealth and power. And that is to save ourselves, to save humanity, and to save the earth. So that's why, despite everything, I don't give up. I know there are a lot of people out there, they see the how difficult it is to achieve peace, how difficult it is to to stop the corruption of government. You know, in America it's horribly bad, and just, just as in Indonesia, it's just easier to see in Indonesia. Um, but I, f- I believe that these things are not going to change unless we work at it and unless we always, always remain vigilant. It's when we become lazy and, and stop paying attention to what people in power are doing, that's when they gain more and more and more power. So I hope you'll join me in my mission to make the world a better place through education, through cooperation, um, through self-improvement, Uh, inspiration, I believe that this can be achieved. But we have to keep on trying and trying and trying and not accepting when things don't go our way. We just have to keep going. Okay? So please join me. Thank you for listening.